Um, somebody's going to try and break for this. I am actually wondering whether Roman Kreuziger has actually got what it takes to take it today. Um, because Contador, you're absolutely right, is actually just out of that quintet as we speak. And I think Roman Kreuziger might well be able to take advantage as uh, Valverde and Contador start to neutralise each other. Well, the interesting thing about the, the permutation of the front of the group, that, as we see an attack from one of the Europe car riders, is the fact that uh, Contador was riding behind Alejandro Valverde. What you don't want is your main opponents uh, ride, riding behind you, because they've got the element of surprise. So there's a, a few flurries of attacks now. It looks like Simon Yates is about to be caught by a flying Europe car rider. Who's I that think it be? is Pierre Roland, but we'll get a look at him. He's, he's got the same... He's got the right... Uh, the, Doesn't the right, right range Roland. and face. Uh, we said Roland's been disappointing of late, but he does peak. He does uh, have these days where he just goes for it and thinks, but you know what, I'm out of contention, but I'm going to do it myself. And people let him go. Of course they do. I mean, yeah. it's a, a race like this, you know, against World Tour opposition with the Tour de France not that far away. You need to start testing your form. I've, no doubt, we'll, it, I've no doubt we'll see Pierre Roland up there in the Tour de France, probably going for the mountains jersey or a surprise stage win. But uh, as we say, Guys from the past, one of the Schlecks there, number 83. Uh, and that's uh, Frank Schleck being distanced by the group, and there's still a sizable number, so he's going to be very, very disappointed. Mm. Yes, uh, and a number of Schleck fans, of which I know there are still plenty out there, but um, anyway, um, less said about that for the time being, the better. Uh, so there we are, and uh, uh, still turning a big one is Louis Leon. It looks like Lewis Leon, uh, after these exploits earlier in the day, he's uh, gone off the back of the mm. group. Obviously, he did try early on, so fair play to him, but it's his, his days are numbered there. And uh, also number 47, dropping off the back there. For t uh, but it's Roman Kreuziger who's setting the tempo at the front, digging deep and breathing very, very deeply. Yes, so he is. So we're setting a really good tempo there at the moment. He t t did some tremendous turns in Tereno Adriatico, and I thought he could have won one of the stages himself, but obviously he actually waited for his team leader. And Tony Martin's still in there. What an amazing ride by Martin. Uh, it is a fantastic uh, ride by Martin. We said he could go deep into the mountain, and so it has proved, and his job done right now. And there, the arm flips out, and he says to Kreuziger, now you're on your own. Arashira's had a good time of things. It won't be his kind of day today, obviously, uh, but he's, uh, he's drawn our attention to him. He certainly has. It was a brave ride yesterday to get back in for a top 10 finish after uh, having a mechanical on the final climb, and the whole of his Europe car team dropped back to pace him back. But uh, again, he's not going to be up there today to see Damiano Cunago uh, with uh, Simon Yates sat on his wheel, and then uh, Valverde not far behind. So all the main GC contenders are there as we thought. Uh, 5.1 to go, and Tony Martin will be uh, just uh, heading. Uh, up this hill as uh, in his ease at the moment. You know, Cadell is looking absolutely fabulous. He's a little assassin. There he is, uh, just on the wheel at the moment of uh, uh, Kwiatkowski. Kunigo also very much involved. This is super. What a uh, what a list we have ahead of us. Uh, it's almost like a menu. You can. Uh, who are you going to pick? Well, I'm, who's the most tasty? I still think it could be Alberto Contador or Valverde, uh, but I'm not ruling out Kwiatkowski. I know technically I can't have three choices, but uh, again, it's not splitting at the moment. But well, it's technically just you can, but you're just not going to be allowed. <laughs> <I can. laughs> but it's still Kreuziger. Traditionally, he's used enormous. This is oh, it's not so There's good for a rider. High no, it's not. It's, uh, straight out of the back there. It's not been a happy season for him. Um, it's fair to say, and um, maybe he'll try a, 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 some other type of face furniture. Uh, it's not working for him. His lucky beard. Uh, there is uh, uh, well, uh, yes, I know. Uh, there are other riders in front of him, but I'm just watching Cadell because I'd love him to turn the clock back on a day like this. Will he? Definitely. We're look, looking at Cadell's style at the moment. A lot of the other guys are churning quite big gears, but Kinego noticeably and Cadell Evans are turning quite small gears, which generally indicates really Hello. good form. So Cadell has gone for this. He's picked it up well, and, and he challenges Valverde. Come with me or go somewhere else. I'm heading for the peak. And he just stretches his legs as if there was any belief that anything else could happen today. He goes for it. And the two main contenders are going to go mano a mano, toe to toe, all the way to the line. It was uh, Valverde who uh, was straight on the wheel of Consul, who slows immediately, looks over his shoulder. I've no doubt we see uh, another couple of explosive efforts for him, but absolutely tore that group asunder. Uh, initially, there was a rider from Asia to up, look, the Perot, who tried to get across, but he couldn't. But at the moment, it's just these two riders. It is. Spilex trying to get over, I think, for Katusha. We'll get the confirmation on that for you in a moment. Um, no sign of Kwiatkowski just for the time being. And that was an amazing turn of pace. Contador showing everyone what he could do. They'll all get back to him right now. 
and it is indeed Spielak 121 with uh, his unzipped jersey just trying to get some cool in there and here goes Kunigo he goes over the other side of the road will he try something clever Kwiatkowski just boxed out of it and we say boxed out as if it was a sprint it virtually is at the moment uh, the uh, the incline is kicking up oh it's all bare chested stuff for the uh, for Putin's boys team Katusha at the moment oh and he's having a go I love a dig like this looks like TJ Van Garden has gone on the left hand side being countered by one of the three Katusha riders doing well in GC Woke poles in third place a quick note Sammy Sanchez it is Sammy Sanchez who's got to history here don't forget he won three times uh, uh, on uh, the trot and why not we're talking about uh, clocks being turned back uh, why not have a go yourself and, and that's what he's doing it was Walt Poles who brought that back but it's a Contador who's gone again and Valverde is sticking to his back wheel like glue not giving him an inch Contador has got uh, strength in depth and he's showing it to us right now uh, while Powell's trying to stay with him for oh we can find a quick step I think he's the the man with the energy, not Michael Kwiatkowski today, and he just sails by them. And Contador has a look. Uh, that cheeky thing that he does is to just look and stare in. And uh, AG2 Ala Mondial, Jean-Christophe Perrault, is he going to join the fun? Of course he is. It's interesting to see Perrault try and bring back woke poles. That's a very unusual move. He's actually just towing back all the GC contenders. It would have been best off just sitting back and launching one. But poles looking very, very good, turning a nice low gear, and the group is absolutely being ripped to shreds. This is Contador about to launch himself yet again. Again, he goes over, does he? Find some space in the road. He's looking deep into the eyes of everybody. And uh, Francis Seger also decide that uh, maybe Thibaut Pinot can deliver something. Maybe one day, perhaps. Is this it? Definitely. That looks like the definite the style of Thibaut Pinot. 13th overall at 56 seconds. That was quite a good attack. But again, Walt Poles is straight on it. And so is uh, Sanchez. Sammy Sanchez still there. Contador still out of the saddle. TJ looking, still there as well, looking, looking back for Cadell Evans, who's still trying to get back on here. Oh, and they've gone again. There we go. Well, uh, they can change the pace, but significantly, the difference between these two guys and the rest is they can sustain it. They can manage the situation, and that's what we've got right now. They dare not let this come down to a sprint, incidentally. Definitely not. They want to split this up as best they can, and Contador is super aggressive. He's almost like he's toying with his opponents, backing off and then hitting them hard, backing off and then hitting them again. There's only so much of that kind of uh, damage you can take it's like being in a ring with a heavyweight smacking you and smacking you and gradually guys are going out the back here but Mikel Nive is struggling there TJ Van Garen is also there it looks like we've got a couple of riders there hey but Gaysink is there but the riders are under the uh, are really under the cosh now from Alberto Contador yeah Kriakoski is really suffering and Damiano Konigo picks it up uh, tight in on the inside grinding it as, uh, as as best he possibly can and John Christophe Perot in the brown and white of 82 are looking them out either Spielak he is there and indeed Cadell is still very much part of proceedings with two wingmen as well uh -huh. and in fact it's Pino uh, who's just trying to latch on at the moment to Simon Spielak who picks it up. Spielak with his jersey completely unzipped showing you how warm it is has got Thibaut Pino for company so a very good attack from Spielak 23rd overall at 58 seconds so he is a danger and it's Walt Poles and Jean-Christophe Perrault who have formed a little quartet now. And it's just easing up the gradients are uh, disappearing and I think the long game is going to get played here by uh, Valverde and uh, Con Contador, it, this suits Contador to have some of these other guys help themselves today because he'll stay in that leader's jersey, providing marks out Valverde. But it looks like Contador's going no. here and he sensed a little <laughs> bit of danger, but that is a, a lovely little opportunity for him to go again. A has bit of to. The carrot has been dangled, but Valverde hasn't given him an inch. He hasn't given him an inch. Uh, the gradient is actually easing here, would you believe? And they relay back on the pair of them uh, to those who are just further up the road ever so slightly. Kunigo, I think, fe feels that he can win this today. Kunigo's riding extremely aggressively, but it's also Walt Poles riding very, very comfortably. And Thibaut Pino, and it's the other Katusha rider, Trofimov, who's a very big danger at 36 seconds. It also comes across. So Katusha up there in numbers. Listen to that crowd, it's absolutely fantastic. And how animated are the riders themselves? Contador still wants to uh, get something out of today, and he does not want this to drift away from him. And what Powers decides to kick as well, finds a little bit of space where there appeared to be none available. The crowd uh, doing their job and just getting out of his way. And John Christophe Perrault comes back to them as well. This is uh, proper marking duties going on right now by Contador against Valverde. I think the sprint is going to come from the men in front because they're going to suddenly be going downhill here. They are, it's only three kilometers to go now, and it's uh, Walt Poles driving over this, 
the, the gradient now just flatten a bit. It's easier to get a bit of momentum. Will he get some assist? But it's Contador now driving five riders back across that gap. He doesn't want to give anybody any any time whatsoever, and he's closing that gap on his own, and it's Valverde on his wheel. It is Valverde on his wheel. Valverde, probably the quicker of the two men when it comes to the sprint. Uh, but there's some quality up here, and some very fast men as well. And Mark Powell's is not hanging about. Uh, brilliant use of the motorcycle, may I say, sir. Uh, did a great job. Just got a, got a little bit of respite, and then just uh, almost followed the draft as well. And it looks like Kuniger has also gone, as he? Let's have a look. Mark Powell's is there, and it is uh, Spielak that comes across to him for Team Katusha as well, unzipped as he is. Free ride at the moment for Yuri Trofimov, who just hangs onto the wheel of uh, Contador and Valverde. Walt Powell's is doing a great one. Walt Powell's is absolutely on fire today. He's also been given free reigns because Kwiatkowski is back further down the hill. But uh, look at Walt Powell. He's got an absolutely fantastic rhythm going. He did put it on the big ring, using the gradient to his advantage. A great time trialist, a fantastic ruler, and climbing exceptionally well today. He's opened up a bit of a gap, and Trofimov is struggling to close it. Yeah, he is struggling to close it. I think uh, some others may struggle to actually stay with him. 2.4 to go. He's going to get the easement of the gradient uh, quickest of all. And Thibaut Pinot has suddenly realised what the danger is and decides that uh, he better just engage, uh, go as quickly as he possibly can. Looks like Evans and his teammates are out of it for uh, BMC. And Volt Poles now has to settle himself into time trial mode here. There was another rider, Mikel Lander from Astana, who was in the mix there helping shut down the gap. But now it's all about Walt Poles getting into a good time trial position and absolutely driving himself clear here, takes a shoulder, just get your head down Walt, you're doing extremely well mate. Yeah he is, he needs to get more of his body out of the wind and just believe in his downhill abilities and here we go, um, it's not that focused a down, it's almost like a downhill ramp uh, with two to go and it looks like Walt Poles is going to deliver today. We did say he's looking very very good, two, two kilometres to go for Walt Poles, attack repeatedly on this climb to give himself a lead. 13 seconds. Well, that's handy. He's 58 down off uh, Contador overall. Contador just rolls to the front of uh, the chasers, and it may well be one for the also rounds today. 1.7 to go. There's no great urgency, and suddenly there is, very much so, uh, from Katusha and Spielak, and his jersey flapping in the wind. He could probably do with that zipped up, to be honest. Uh, forget about trying to stay cool and just uh, get yourself a bit more aero at a moment like this. Nine seconds. This is going to be close. It's been so, ac uh, so action-packed, this finale. There's been no opportunity from to zip his top up but ideally he would, doesn't want that flapping in the breeze on this downhill section but uh, yes the uh, the trio of, of Spilak, Chinetsky and Trofim are very very active at the front but it's still all about Walt Poles who has a tenuous lead of only 10 seconds with 1.3 kilometers to go. Well heading for the uh, 1200 meter marker and uh, this is no gap at all nine seconds they could still close this down if they all work together but are they it's a, a whole series looking quite ragged just for now three BMC boys still in this one I wonder if somebody else is going to pick up the mantle one to go under the flam rouge I think he might just get there nine seconds he's holding it was Thibaut Pinot who took it up for Frontier Leisure and it does look like the white jersey is now on the front is that Kwiatkowski blocking I can't quite tell but he's opened up to 10 seconds now the road goes up a little bit and then drops down to the finish it's all about Walt Poles now. It is, and the more sinuous this is, the better it is for him, because he can pick his lines, but not only that, Kwiatkowski can get to the front, hold a defined line, and make everyone else have to ride around him. And that's the teammate's job the man in the white jersey is doing for his friend, Walt Poles, who's going to race away for victory here, 500 metres. He's going to hold this all the way. He certainly is. What a fantastic ride by Walt Poles. He's been there. He's been the right-hand man for Kwiatkowski for so long. One more look over his shoulder, but he attacked just at the right time. He, in fact, he attacked on on several occasions. What a wonderful this is victory this is going to be for the Amiga Farmer Quick Step Rider. Yeah, worryingly, we had a, a, a very early switch to that camera. I was thinking, where is he? He's here, he's safe, and he's heading for victory. Ron Pauls went for it at the perfect time, and he has delivered a fabulous win in some very, very big company as well. It looked like Valverde was racing for the line and uh, made it into second place. Valverde was second there, and Sammy Sanchez in third, and Kwiatkowski's just crossed the line there, nine seconds behind his teammate. What an absolutely superb solo victory there from Walt Poles. We did say earlier on he deserved it. He's a man in form and he took his opportunity absolutely superbly as we see Mieke Nieve from Team Sky cross the line up 25 seconds. Well, uh, Contador did a great job. It wasn't quite mano a mano. They decided to save themselves for later in this event. There's plenty more, of course, to come on this tour of the Basque Country. You don't want to burn all your bridges trying to prove a point on a day like this.
Uh, don't forget Contador wears the leader's jersey and indeed will probably possibly carry that all the way. Valverde just trying to get some seconds. It may well have been one or two, but the margin of uh, uh, lead for Contador is still manageable as far as he's concerned. And he's saving his resources for later on. One man who just went for it today, Walt Pals, and what a delivery that was. Plan A delivered beautifully. I mean, he looked after Kwiatkowski all day long, was setting a rhythm himself, but then obviously was feeling that good. I mean, it wasn't just an opportunist move. He was riding extremely strongly, and the riders just couldn't go with him. He attacked and he attacked, and I think on the, th the, th the third or fourth attack, he attacked, sat down, spinning a low gear, put it onto the big ring, used a gradient to his advantage, and powered away to an absolutely superb solo victory, but well-deserved. I've seen him ride a earlier in the year purely at the service of his of his teammate but what a